Welcome back to the counter. Today's video is going to be um, a new project where I will be taking um, some of the, the textured um, feather dancing feather type things that I've done on um, poly art paper and I'm going to be mounting them on some small boards. Now this is just a prototype. I will I will ultimately be looking to do these on a bigger board. So what I have are these small um, boards that are cut out of um, thinnish marine ply and then I've gone through and I've sealed them just on the top and um, I'll seal the bottom uh, later. But what I want to make sure is that none of the um, sap or, or any of the colour will actually seep up through this uh, through this board. Now because this is synthetic paper um, there is a little bit of experimentation involved in um, a glue that works to to mount this to the boards. Now um, regular uh, gel medium actually um, tends to dissolve some of the clay coating on this paper so um, I had a had to uh, have a bit of a, a look and a play around with glues and what I've discovered is yes paste so I'm going to be using this to stick my poly art paper to these boards now this is all about what surfaces you're sticking to um, the other surface or what type of surface you have on your boards. So you may need some experimentation. If you were to use just straight yuppo then you could use um, just regular um, gel medium, gloss gel medium and that will stick as a glue. You could also try some um, wood glue if this was straight yuppo. But because this has a clay coating um, the gel medium dissolves it slightly and, and does, does leave you with a, a suspect bond. So I'll start, I'll start this off, I'm going to cut this down, two of these will fit in there quite nicely and then when these are done I will look at what I've got and then look at some surface embellishments. Okay, so uh, from here on in probably not a lot of talking. Um, just a lot of cutting, gluing, and um, waiting for glue to dry. I have some baking paper that I'll be using um, to stop uh, any damage on the pieces of, of artwork. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure everything is clean. So a quick wipe over with a spritz of alcohol. And on the back of my I'm going to spread this on. It's very thick glue. So I'm just going to spread it smoothly.
and this is just to remove the bubbles try not to damage your paintwork make sure you get the corners Also, use your hands. You can actually feel if there's any bubbles. But in reality, because this has layers of paint on it, it's actually quite stable. And of course, um, you could use a card. However, because you've got texture in your paint, um, you don't want to scrape your, your texture off just because you're gluing things down. So now I'm going to turn this upside down. I'm going to put some heavy books on it and I'm going to uh, press it flat. Now you'll notice there will be some glue seeping out. I will clean that up before it dries once I've done this second one. So again, I'll fast forward this so you can you don't have to Just going to clean off the excess glue. Okay, stage two. So what I've done is once I glued down this um, poly art paper, I've protected the back with some um, Glad press and seal. And I've run some electrical tape around the outside. Now resin doesn't stick to um, electrical tape so I'll take that off and I'll be left with the marine ply edge look. Now I'm going to resin these. Now these, these are just going to be a play. Uh, they're only a prototype and I'm just going to try a couple of things. What I've got over here is somewhere I actually did the work directly onto the board and um, in this one I'm just going to clear coat and see what that look is like. The underpainting of this is actually rolled metallic paint on uh, baking paper and then adhered to the board. Again, protected on the back with press and seal. And because this is going to be a clear coat, what I've done is I've run the electrical tape. This has texture, so I don't know how deep it is. So I've made a, a masking tape or painter's tape well 
which I'll take off. Um, because this is just clear, I, I won't show you the process, but we're going to have a bit of fun with some colour on top of these. So what I plan on doing is on one of them, uh, this is a bit messy, but this is actually black. <laughs> um, it's Art Tree Creations um, Epoxy Paste. And what I'm going to do is make a vignette uh, look around the outside of one of them. And then we're going to play with some Liquitex ink um, very, very lightly. And we're going to uh, see if we can get some um, depth happening. Um, I've not made a well on these because the, the texture is not too great. And it may um, look really nice. They'll probably need two coats of resin. Now, um, I, I reckon that these should take about 100 mils of resin each. Maybe these um, will be a little bit thicker. So let's mix some resin and um, see what we come up with. Like I said, these are only um, prototypes. I will be um, looking to do them bigger uh, once I work out what looks good and what doesn't. couple of things before we start. Um, poly art paper, because it's a synthetic paper, you need to make sure that your paint is cured properly. These were done a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the reason I say um, poly art makes a difference is that no moisture comes out from below it. It's like sitting on a, on a smooth, non-porous surface. So unlike a canvas, you don't get any airflow underneath the paint. So you must make sure that this paint is completely cured and has no moisture. I've leveled my board with my um, little uh, caravan leveler and I'm using my temperature gauge. The air temperature is 20 in here and that's probably borderline um, too cold. So the resin will actually be quite thick. Um, so what I'll do is I'll warm up my resin and um, give me give myself a, a little bit of um, vis uh, lower the viscosity of the resin. I'll be using um, some older resin that I've I've had um, that's probably at the end of its shelf life uh, at some Pro Marine, so it is quite thick to start with. Um, it will have a lot of bubbles as I mix it. So I will be warming that up. Okay, so let's, I'll, I'll mix them separately as well. So let's mix up our first batch. Okay. This will just be for the black. I want it fairly dark, so I'll see what I get. Mixing it in well. As always with black, keep try and keep yourself clean so that you don't contaminate any of the other colours. So the first thing I'm going to do is a light layer across the board. Now I have to be careful about torching bubbles here because remember that poly art is synthetic paper. You don't really want to get it smoking hot. Okay, now we'll just put some in the middle to push it out. Uh, 
and then I'm going to pour the black around the outside. And let it fill. sure I've got those edges nice torch the bubbles to do is I want to bring some in slightly like that More smoky bits. Make sure you I've got coverage on this absolute black bit. Watch that. Now because this is pro marine, it's going to lace if I leave it alone. So those bits that I dragged my palette knife through, I'm just going to walk away and let it do its thing. Of course, this is just pandering to my love of black resin. Just make sure those edges are nice and sharp. We'll leave that one as it is. Do a bit of clean up and um, we can do another one. We'll do the other one with ink. Just 
just need a little bit more here. Okay, so while the other one's doing its thing and lacing, I'll bring you down and show you that um, in a sec. We're, we'll have another go with this, only this time we'll use inks. So what I, what I want to do is use some clear and some really light colouring and then maybe some streaks of the actual ink. Now any spare clear I'm just putting on the one that I'm expecting to, to have a clear. Now these inks are pretty strong so I only want them uh, the tiniest amount so we'll mix it very carefully. So I've got some dioxazine purple here And I'm just going to dip rather than take a drop. So I only want it very, very light, almost like a lilac. Yeah, that's the colour. So I'm mixing that thoroughly. Then the same with the um, deep turquoise. I only want a hint of colour. Hmm. Well, that's not exactly a hint, is it? I don't want this dark enough to obscure the the actual design. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to swirl this. Put some clear. just so so that it fans out and gives you that look just move it around a bit to get different colors We'll do the same for the green. Fan it out with clear. Let's get rid of the bubbles and see what we've got. You can see these sort of wispy tones through the through the piece. Some light areas that I missed. Those. 
Now, what I want to do is drag some ink through these, just in just in the tiny bits. I'm tempted to use my palette knife just to see what happens. Mm, kind of vanishes. I am just following some of the lines that didn't quite work out like I expected so we'll just mix that around a bit Let's give some dots, which are quite nice. All I'm doing is mixing it in a little bit better. Still gives an interesting ethereal type effect. So if I actually mixed a little bit of that with some resin and made a stronger resin Interesting. I'll do the same with the turquoise. Just move that around a bit. Gives it another layer of depth. Interesting. Okay, we'll give that one a torch to the bubbles. here that I missed. And I think we'll actually leave it there and see what we come up with. Now it's going to have some bits in it I think from the way I added that ink but it's interesting. 
Okay, we'll see what happens when we come back tomorrow. Fix that one. Okay, so these have cured overnight, and this is what we've got. Um, this black lacing over the top of them gave me some interesting ideas to, to work with. This, the um, one where we added some subtle colours and clear um, resin just kind of changes the, the feel. And of course there's still got some dots in there where I um, accidentally put the ink in. These are just clear resin over ones that were done directly on the board. Some beautiful depth in this one. This one looks quite nice, but um, the colours are a little bit insipid. Uh, I think I prefer these deep dark and uh, the contrasting vibrant colours. So there we have it. Um, not bad for an experiment, gives me uh, some ideas to work on for the next lot. Thanks for watching.